my name's Ellen Kaplan, and I've been a Valacitos Water customer for four years. And I guess it was during COVID in 2020 that I needed a project to kind of take my mind off of everything. And that's when I thought, I just want to get rid of all the grass, and put down some bark. I created the walkway out of granite, and I installed a drip system, and I immediately saw savings. I knew I wanted a, a pretty front. It was kind of scary to think I'm digging up my grass. You know, that's generally what you think of when you think of your front lawn. And I wanted something with a lot of curb appeal and something kind of flirty and girly. This is my first house since my divorce, and I just wanted it to reflect something colorful and fun and pretty. Oh, I decided to participate in the Valacitos Water District Landscape Contest on a lark. I was reading it one morning over coffee, and I thought, I should do that. I love my yard. I love what I've done. I wanted to win the gift card and I wanted my kids to see that with a little hard work, you know, good things can happen. And the recognition is always good. My advice to people wanting to kind of refresh their yard or do something different is just to kind of take it in small chunks. You know, for me, it was sort of overwhelming to think, oh my gosh, I want this beautiful front lawn, but I don't know how to get started. I looked at Pinterest. I looked at magazines. I drove by neighborhoods that had professionally designed yards and I know I couldn't afford that, but I just took inspiration from that and I saw what other people were doing and what works in a neighborhood. I applied to the SoCal Water Smart rebate program which is an incentive for homeowners to transform from turf or grass to things like I did, bark or decomposed granite and using native plants. The rebate that I received from them helped pay for the entire transformation. The hummingbirds love it. They love the anapantha. They love the hibiscus. I think the hummingbirds prefer the plants over the feeder. And sometimes my cats kind of go in the front window and then they watch the hummingbirds. Just this morning when I was watering, I paused because a hummingbird came so close I could actually hear his wings. It's just magical that what I did is, is helping birds and bees. So when I redid the lawn, I installed a drip system, targeted water only to the plants, which probably accounts for my huge water savings. In the summer months, believe it or not, well, I have four kids, so my water bill at its peak was around $250. Like a year later, I've actually seen 52% savings in my water bill. Well, I'm grateful to Valacitas Water District for providing the incentive to help me transform my lawn into a beautiful garden. So we come out here, we sit on the front. I'm happy to be saving money every month and conserving water. That's important too. Hi, my name is Bruce Ferguson. I've been a Viacitos Water District customer for about 10 years. I was interested in putting in a drought tower landscape to conserve water. But I also was interested in native California plants, so I wanted to help the wildlife in the area by adding native plants. I visited the demonstration garden at the district and be able to see all the different technologies and, and plants and other ways you could arrange a landscape. I also am an engineer at Hunter Industries, which makes a lot of different irrigation products, including controllers and sprinkler systems. I've had a chance to try different things out in my yard and see what works and be able to try to design things on my own. So that's been a very interesting part of the process, is to integrate different water savings technologies. I use Hunter products including smart irrigation controller and uh, MP rotators to really efficiently use water around the landscape. My rainwater system has four barrels at each corner of the house and each barrel holds about 50 gallons of water. Those will fill up easily with a good rainstorm and I'll use that water to water different plants around my house. Some interesting features I have in the landscape are a dry water bed here that I can sometimes fill with water as needed and have a small pump that'll run water through it. Some favorite features of the garden are just being able to attract native species and bees and other pollinators and things. So advice I'd give to others is, I guess when I'm first getting started with putting in some of the drought tolerant plants is I needed to give them sufficient water to really develop at first and then after that time period, I could cut back and get more water savings. I did all the landscaping myself and I think others could do the same pretty easily. I've been really excited to be a part of this contest. It's really been inspiring. And I'd like to encourage other homeowners to also participate in the contest and use native plants in their yard and uh, efficiently use water. I'm Doug Hausman. My wife and I 
live up here in Emerald Heights in San Marcos. Well, we moved in here five years ago. We had a lot of old bushes and agapantha that were, were dying and pretty much ripped everything out and started putting uh, succulent plants in. We started with uh, a lot of soil from a couple of different sources that we had. The Meadow Mushroom Farm over in Off-Broadway supplies as much mushroom compost as you want for free. So I brought a lot of that, amended the soils, then started putting different succulents in. And we propagate pretty much all of our own succulents. But almost everything in the garden is, is from some type of pups that we got from the ground or some propagating from some different plant. Well, we moved back here to California from Idaho and we had unlimited water up there. Down here we have limited water and though some people get faked out that one year we get rain and they think the drought's over, but it's, it's not ever going to be over. So when I came in here, I tore out all the sprinkler systems. I water everything by hand. I water probably 10 to 12 times a year and some of the plants maybe four times a year is all they get. So it's quite a savings on water. We've tried to get our different friends and neighbors involved in putting succulents in. So I've done some little small projects here in the neighborhood, do some larger installs and designing of yards and other places right here in the community in San Marcos and Escondido area. Have the people come over and look at my plants and decide what they like. At least it puts them, starts getting them in succulents where they start saving the water and we do small things at a time. It's, it's real easy to start getting into succulents. Again, they can go weeks sometimes without water. So it's easy to find out information online uh, with Balacitos. It's great that we have a place that you can go and actually see the plants. Again, they're some of the most forgiving plants, even if you know, like someone steps on them and then you can just cut them and, and make new stuff. So using like about five units of water, it's, it's a pretty low use compared to what we had at our other homes. So the name of the cherry was the Cystinosis Foundation, but the group that we work with, which is a branch of that, is 24 Hours for Hank. And that's one of the children up in Idaho that was a grandchild of our good friends up there. And so that's how we became involved doing it because of, of Hank having it and knowing the process you had to go through with the orphan disease. We've raised over the last six years, usually we raise selling plants $1,000 to $2,000, and we've been able to go through a, a company then that matches our funds. So two to $4,000 we can wind up giving each year with the plant sales. Keep in mind this is just a hobby for me and I just propagate here at my house and then find customers on basically on walks to the neighborhood and that buy, wind up buying the plants for the charity. I've done all the work myself here at, at the house done entirely on our own here with uh, no outside vendors or anything. 